It's okay. It's safe to come out now. Little shouty man's gone. It's me, Reedy, another episode of Beat the First Man. Uh, what we got for you on this week's show, how old goes to Italian, 4D goes north of the border to Scotland, and while we're up there, we do zooming in with two lads from Volca. One a Hearts fan, one a Hibs fan. What could possibly go wrong? Make sure you stick around for that. What are we waiting for? Kick them footballs really hard so they catch fire. Let's get going. So here we are then, incredibly, episode 37 of Beat the First Man. Uh, as always, if you're new to the show, welcome on board the BTFM bus. Um, if you are new to the show, please click the subscribe down here. You'll also get to realise I'm pretty crap at doing that. Uh, be sure to comment in the comments below. Give me a like if you enjoy it, all those sort of things, just the usual stuff. Um, if you're a continued subscriber or viewer, Thank you so much. As always, from the bottom of my heart, it's you guys that keep me going and keep me making these shows every week. So, we're going to start with Stoke Gabriel. Remember them? Well, we put them on ice um, because it was the end of the season and you know, everything had come to a close. But they have been playing a couple of pre-season friendlies or end-of-season friendlies or between-season friendlies. Anyway, um, Josh Organ's dad, Rich, has been very kindly keeping me up to date with the scores. And something happened this week that I need to share with you guys. So my text went off and it was half time in the Stoke Gabriel friendly. Good news, Reedy, nil-nil at half time. I thought, bloody hell, that's good, nil-nil. Seconds later, another text. Sorry, my mistake, we're one nil down. Okay, so we let that one go. At the end, you're not going to believe this, Stoke Gabriel, they didn't just score one. They didn't just score two. They didn't just score three. Four times. Four goals Stoke Gabriel scored. Two of them were own goals. A 2-2 draw. Still the elusive win we wait for. But it is looking a lot better for next season. It's got to be said. There's a lot going on. Um, we will get Gary Page, the chairman, on before the season starts, as promised. But, uh, yeah, things are looking good for State Gabriel for the new season. So, how old? The game we all love, apart from those that send me abusive messages after the show telling me how they got it wrong again. Um, Oh, it's quite simple. I post a picture of a footballer. All you've got to do is guess how old he was when that picture was taken. Oh, so simple. This week it's off to Italia uh, and a midfielder who graced seven clubs across Serie A and Serie B, making exactly 200 club appearances. Um, on reading up on him, there was a little section called Characteristics and it said, and I quote, Temperamental player. I'm not sure that's a skill set we should be looking for. Um, anyway, it's simple enough. It's time to reveal. When Carlo Trevisanelli was, this picture was taken. How old was he? And yeah, it's not the easiest name in the world to say either. He could have done with a shorter name. So anyway, we'll come back to that later on in the season. You never know. Ted might come back and... Please leave your comments below. What's your first guess? Not what you actually ended up with, but your first guess on how old you think old Carlo was. So, 4D. It's been a while. We've not handed out a 4D award for a while. So, uh, for those of you, again, new to the show, it's pretty simple. This is the high-budget part of the show, the 4D award. So, it's uh, d -d 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 3 and DOF 4. 4D. Genius, utter genius, honestly. How this hasn't got primetime TV yet, I do not know. Uh, well, I do actually. Most of it's shite, let's be honest. Um, anyway, it's off to Scotland this week, and a goalkeeper that not many south of the border have probably ever heard of, a guy called Xander Clark, who's the St Johnston goalkeeper. So last weekend, they travelled to Ibrox to face Rangers. Uh, Rangers completely untouchable at Ibrox this season. Scottish Cup quarter final. Um, 82 minutes into the game, Xander Clark makes a great save from Morelos, um, keeps it a nil-nil, takes the game into extra time. So, nil-nil, all looking good. Uh, extra time, Rangers take the lead in the 118th minute. I know what you're thinking. He's letting a goal. They're losing 1-0. Why has he got the 4D award? Wait. Patience. So, 120 minutes on the clock. St. Johnston win a corner. Our friend Xander 
lumbers up to the opposition penalty area. Now, we've all seen it. We've all seen the goalie go up for a corner, get in the way, get nowhere near the ball, just basically be a pain. I don't know why they bother half the time. Um, who can ever forget Stuart Pearce bringing David James on to play him up front when he had another striker on the bench? That sort of thing. Anyway, not old Xander. Our mate Xander was a little bit different. So the corner was floated in. Xander rose like an absolute salmon leaping out of one of them Scottish rivers, bulleted a header, and I mean bulleted a header, uh, towards goal. Now, Chris Kane, if you're watching Chris Kane, St. Johnson striker, you're a little shit because you poked it into the net and stole the goal off our mate Xander because it was flying in the bottom corner. But anyway, the ball deflected in off Chris Kane for a goal for the equaliser. Cue wild celebrations for the assist king that is Xander Clark. Should have been goal scorer Xander Clark. So one all, penalty shootout. What happened next? Of course he saved two of them. Xander Clark made two penalty saves in the penalty shootout. Cue more wild celebrations and the Perth Saints were on their way to the semi-final. So I think all it leaves us to say is... Do, do, do. Xander Clark, 4D, my friend. Well done, Chris Kane. Tut, 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 tut. Anyway, here he is. The little furry bear is here. You all right, Ted? Steve Arnott, Hastings, Kate. Ah, feck it. I've got no idea. Ted, Jesus, are you still going on about line of duty? What is doing my head in? It's the last one this weekend. Thankfully, I can go back to getting pissed and trawling Binder. Binder? D do you mean Tinder? No, Binder. What's Binder? It's a dating app for bears. A dating app for bears. Right, okay. And have, are you, have you having any joy? I'm trying to get myself some fur on fur action. Oh, Ted, enough. Stop now. Stop, stop, stop. So, last week's little knob of the week, Ted, was dead easy. How's this week been? A little bit more tricky, I can't lie. Well, have you managed to find anyone, anything at all, that possibly could have won little knob of the week? Well, just when I thought I'd had it, up popped a Spanish TV channel. Movie star Deportes came to the rescue. So a TV channel is winning little knob of the week. Yep, they made a right mess of things. Ted, could this be something to do with the legend that is Liam Gallagher? Yep, the one and only. You do realise I could be the missing Gallagher. We're so similar. Like a drink, like to party, big stars, furry eyebrows. It's whatever, Ted. So anyway, what, what have movie star Deportes done to win your little knob of the week? Well, during the PSGV Man City game, they decided to show one of Liam's tweets on the screen about Neymar's antics. I'm not sure they knew what one of those words meant. So yes, they did. So Liam Gallagher posted this tweet during the Paris Saint-Germain v Man City game. Let's be honest, I don't think he was saying that Neymar was class. No, I don't think he was. So movie star Deportes, you are Ted's little knob of the week. It might be worth getting an English translator on before you decide to put people's tweets on the screen. Uh, needless to say, the blurred out bit, that wasn't blurred out on Spanish TV. Nope, they showed the word. So you're back later for how old the reveal, Ted? Yeah, another sweep over, Reedy. You got a thing for those? Ah, oh, the bear, the bear, the bear. So this week, zooming in, I have to say, I, I love zooming in, it's great fun. Everyone that's come on has been good fun, been good banter, we've had a good laugh with it. This week's I've always been looking forward to. So the two lads from, Val from Valka, Volker came on, Tam and Callum. Tam, massive Hearts fan, does a Hearts podcast that works, he's proper, proper jambo. Callum, massive Hibs fan. Hearts, Hibs, what could go wrong? Well, do you think I played on it a little bit? Of course I did. Here's zooming in with Volker. Enjoy, and there'll be a little clip of Volker performing after the chat. So this week on Zooming In, delighted to say I'm joined by two members of the Scottish band Volker. Welcome to the show, Tam, the vocalist, and Callum, bassist. Gents, how are we both? I'm good. Thanks for having us on, man. Uh, good, thanks, Chef. 
Uh, absolutely no problem at all. Um, the real fun will come when we get to the football stage. Um, <laughs> we'll go into that a little bit later, but we'll, let's talk about your music first. So first things first, Volker, there will be a number of people out there who don't know your music, don't know what you're about. So this is your platform, Gents Sellers Volker. What are you all about? So I were just uh, five guys that have grown up together in West Lovian. We just probably, I would describe us like hard hitting rock as our sort of go-to um, release. We kind of had a wee bit of break for the, we've been going how many years now, Calm Four or five? We started, five? I think officially started about 2015, 16. Yeah, cool. So longer than about expected. Four or five years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we've, we've recently kind of came back with a bang. We released our new single, Become Undone, uh, last month. Um, so yeah, and, and then this week we've released our music video for that as well. So um, yeah. Good stuff. And I listened, I've listened to Become Undone over the last week or so because I do it with everybody. So I've at least got a, a, some idea of who I'm talking to and what they do. And it's very, if you like the Foo Fighters, I've got to say, it's very Foo Fighters. <laughs> That's kind of the go to band for us, actually. We always say, if you're speaking to anyone, they'll be like, who do you sound like? And we're like, I don't know, because we all say someone different, but the go to one for everyone is probably the Foo Fighters, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, and of course, <laughs> we struggled for a long time. Yeah. We struggled for a long time to figure out a band that we actually sounded like, and then eventually it hit us in the face. It was like, yeah, we do actually sound quite like the Foo Fighters. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, the first thing I do, because I'm not musically trained or talented in any way, shape or form, the first thing I do is try and compare whoever you are to who you sound like. It's the first, this is my go-to, and literally within about 45 seconds of that song, Foo Fighters, all over it. So, it's, uh, yeah, no, really good, gents. Love it. So at the moment, there seems to be a massive surge in music from Scotland. It's really taken, I mean, I had the guys from Dictator on the other week who are, are really snowballing pretty quickly. You guys, the Snuts have just had a number one album. Jerry Cinnamon's doing his thing. What, what do we put it down to? What, what, why this sudden massive resurgence in music from north of the border? I don't know why it is. It's weird that so many of those acts that are coming out are from our area as well, like in West Lovian. Like, it's strange with Lewis, Capaldi, and then you've got the Snats, the guys in Dictator, also got Mark Sharp and the race. I think, you know what, I don't know, I've spoke to other bands in sort of other areas, and it seems to be a bit of a competition, whereas in Scotland, I think we all work together, and we've all got that sort of same goal. And it's quite cool that everyone kind of pushes themselves. And seeing other bands do be so successful, I think that kind of gives guys like us, the urge to try and push to get to that level as well. So I don't know what it is. It's, it's kind of like a competition, but it's not because we help each other. So it's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that was the great thing with the Snuts. Everybody, I mean, everybody really massively got behind. The, I mean, for those who don't know, the Twitter campaign to try and get them to number one. I mean, it just went bonkers. And literally yeah. everyone was piling behind it. There was no, you know, no feeling of, oh, I don't want them to do well. It was literally everyone was fully behind them to get to number one. And when they actually did it, I mean, it was just, it was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. It was incredible. And, you know, what the thing for me is that I remember... When, so Tam and I have played in bands together since, oh, like, since about 2008, I think, 2007, 2008. And we used to play in venues with, with the Snuts, with Lewis Capaldi, with all these bands back in the day, other ones that have folded since then. And you used to think to yourself, this must be what it's like for everyone. Everyone yeah. must be playing with like people like this. And now you start to realise, it's sort of like, you know, now two of those artists have had UK number ones. Yes, that doesn't happen in an awful lot of places from a local scene. So it's it's not something that's just suddenly happened. There's been there was a scene, there was like, you know, a bit of a history behind it, and now suddenly it's it's snowballed into this. So it it doesn't come without hard work though. Like these guys have recently just turned a screw and taken it up to the next level and they fully deserve all the success that they get. Yeah, no, and you're so right because, you know, like a lot of people won't see that years of going and playing the places where 10, 15 people are turning up um, to get to where, you know, they've got to and where you guys are, are open to get to going forward. So it's, it's very, very true. So lockdown obviously has been tough for all of us, but a lot of the musicians I've had on here have all said it's been brilliant for them because what it's allowed them to do is real channel their efforts into the music a lot of people have spent time listening to music who've stopped listening to music and you, you're all picking up fan bases. Have you, you guys found that the same as well? Or I think we kind of, so prior to lockdown, we'd actually, we recorded a few tracks um, 
we held off and held off because a lot of be like Volca as a thing. I think we put a lot of our stuff into live shows and kind of showing up on that basis. So we've had our music video was recorded in February 2020. Um, we also had the the tracks. They were recorded at sort of winter time. 2019, 2020 as well. So we've kind of kept a hold of them, just seeing the way of the world, how that was going to go. So if we could get out live and sort of show everyone what we were about as well. So it's kind of, I think we're probably different from what you've just said. We've kind of held off. We've maybe not been, I've kind of struggled to be creative over lockdown, which is strange. I've kind of been trapped in a bubble with myself and, <laughs> and I struggled to do anything sort of creative in that sense. But I think coming out of it now, it's put us in a, it's kind of allowed us to sort of, refresh and sort of replan what we've got going on so it's been quite good that that way and to release a track it was quite interesting and um, we always we'd released previous tracks and we'd always try and tour them around the country and stuff so to actually have it and just the track alone it was a wee bit of a different experience which was quite interesting to do to be fair yeah and how how's the single been received i mean i say i've i've downloaded it downloaded it the other day and it, I, I love it it's great i think it's you know it's right. proper hardcore rock and it's you know it's it's a top tune and you know how's it been received by people in general i think it's you know it's been all right hasn't it Tom? yeah it's 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 been our it's been our best release to date without a doubt um and i don't think that's um that's by fluke it's, it is our best release to date so it's living up to its potential in our eyes um but Within the world, the way that it is, the way that streaming is, um, you need to you need to use that to level up to the next thing. There always has to be something new, and I think that's it. Like you know, we're not expecting to release one track and just to sort of go out, blow up, whatever else. We've got to build that momentum. So that that's it for us. It's, the track's done really well. We're really proud of it, um, and so the next one has to do just as well, or if not better. Yeah, of course, you're always going to be setting the bar that bit higher, aren't you, every time? That's the problem. So It has been really cool. We have had quite like, a lot of reviews coming in and different radio plays. And even just like, see social media now, it was so much more of a reaction on social media in terms of Twitter and Instagram and that, which you maybe wouldn't have found, found previously at lockdown. But as you say, loads more people are listening to music. So it was quite interesting to see that. Yeah. And of course, with social media, you're branching out to fans that not necessarily would have heard of you guys before. Because, you know, the likes of me and Leicester, I would not necessarily have heard of Volker sitting here in Leicester in my front room. But now I know you are. I've got Dictator I'd never heard of previously to this either. So from that side, I think it's been, you know, from a, a music fan, it's been great. It's been, you know, it's been yeah. fab to pick up all these new bands. So, um, but of course, moving away from music... <laughs> I genuinely, this is, I've been looking forward to this all week. As a Scotsman, I know the rivalry between the two clubs, but there will be a lot of people out there south of the border who won't really know. Let's be honest, gents, you two clubs detest each other, don't you, with a passion? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what, every, everyone south of the border fights. And the feeling's Rangers mutual. And Celtic. Yeah. yeah, it is mutual. I, everyone south of the border fights Rangers and Celtic, but I tell you what, like Hearts and Hibs is just as... Uh, just as better, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, whenever the games were on Sky, whenever the, the Derby games were on Sky, if you gave, if they were on at the same time and it was the old firm game or your one, I would always have picked your one because it, right. the old firm was always there was always so cagey. There was always that other element to it which doesn't get talked about enough that should. Um, yep. Whereas yours wasn't. It was just a proper hatred of each other, and it's a proper <laughs> local derby. It's what you want. And there was always there always there always tended to be loads of goals. There always tended to be loads of yellows and some sending offs. And it was a proper derby match. And you know, I for one, I'm glad you've come back up, Tam. I'm not going to lie because that derby See. game is going to be back <laughs> next season when hopefully there'll be fans back in the ground as well. And um, so I thought, how can we how can we start it off? And I thought the only fair way is you can have thirty seconds each one after the other, to tell us why you're the biggest club in Edinburgh. So Off. I've got my stopwatch, and I tossed the coin earlier, T went first, and Tam, you did win. So you get the first 30 seconds on my shout, and I've got a bell for when it ends, to, uh, to tell me why Hearts are the biggest club. So you've got 30 seconds starting now. Well, she prepped me for this, but yeah. Um, so I think... Um, and historically in the SPL, Hearts are the fig third biggest club in terms of points gained since the SPL has started. So that proves that. Hearts have also got 
150 more derby wins than Hibs. I think I'm roughly wrong with my things. And also, in the biggest derby ever in our history, Hearts won at 5-1 in the Scottish Cup final. Um, so that's probably it. Um, other than that, I'll try to think what else. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Ties up. I wasn't <laughs> going to prep you. That'd have been no fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Callum, 30 seconds, starting from now. So, Hearts, Hearts are the big team, all right? And that's just fine. They can call themselves the big team, but the real big teams don't call themselves the big teams. They know that they're the big team, all right? Nobody wants to support Hearts. Hibs are the cooler team. Always have been, always will be, all right? Train spotting wasn't inspired by Hearts. It was inspired by Hibs. Irvin Welsh didn't want to write about Hearts, all right? They're not cool enough. Hibs recently as well, okay? We've gone through our hard times, but we're back where we belong and we're on top. <laughs> It, it, was a, it was a close contest, gents. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it wasn't really. He came out with no facts. Um, <laughs> wrote about, spoke about a fictional book. <laughs> That's oh, right. brilliant. I'm running on vibes only. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy that. Right, so I've got a couple of individual ones for you, and then we'll move on to the joint stuff. So, Tam, south of the book, there's been a lot of noise this year about Hearts fans and Robbie Nielsen. So, obviously, you guys have romped the championship, let's face it. You got to last season's Scottish Cup final, narrowly lost on penalties. Um, but there seems to be a real sense of a lot of fans want him out. Um, can you shed some light on why people want him out? Why there is this sense of that having just had, from the outside, looks like a decent season? You can count me in on that as well. We wanted Robbie Nielsen out, to be honest with you. So <laughs> I'll, I'll put my hat in the ring there. Um, as I spoke to you before, I, I actually do a Hearts podcast as well yeah. called This Is My Story. And we, we've discussed it in great deal of length. Um, but there was a large majority of the, well, it was probably a quiet majority when Robbie Nielsen came in that didn't want him back. Um, ever since he's came in, it's just only, he only really focuses on one tactic. He plays the 4 one every single game and it's just boring and lacklustre and we can't in the championship we've had these teams that are sat behind us. We can't seem to break them down. There's never sort of any second game plan. Obviously we've got beat, we've broke our records this season because we got put out of the League Cup by part-time Alawa and then in the Scottish Cup we got put out by non-league Brora Rangers and the worst defeat in Hearts ever history um, and it a lot of the media have been like, why are you just reacting on this Broader Rangers defeat? But it's it's just been a combination of like different aspects. We've signed multiple players over the last year. I think it's 18 players, and there's probably only two that you would say are good enough to stay. And it's just, there's no second plan. And honestly, the championship is pretty shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, we at Hearts haven't won the league. Genuinely, the other teams have won it for Hearts because you'll find Dundee will play Rafe Rovers, one team will drop points, then Dunfermline will play Rafe Rovers, the other team will drop points. So the only reason Hearts have went beyond that is because they have won games, but it's just been so boring. And I, I reckon if there was fans in at Tynecastle at the moment, it would be toxic, really yeah, toxic. Pretty hostile. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. Well, Callum, so... Hibs are on, I mean, you are the flip side at the moment. You're on the verge of clinching a place in Europe, um, sitting third in the table. Just recently got to the Scottish Cup semi-final as well. A great season, I, would, I think you'd argue. Is there that little sense of disappointment of what's happened in the last season Scottish Cup semi-final that was played this season and the League Cup semi-final that went as well? Yeah, they're, they're definitely the two low points. Like, during lockdown, I can't describe it. I remember sitting in front of my TV, the only time I've worn my head strip, and then just the crushing, bitter disappointment. I just feeling like a wee idiot sitting there, <laughs> watching the football on my own, hoping for a win. And just the performances in those games were just criminal. They just totally did not grasp the opportunity. However, the flip side to that is, throughout the league, the, the team have been pretty consistent. Now, we've been lucky that Aberdeen have imploded this season, but it, does, it doesn't matter. It's all about doing it on the season. We've been there or thereabouts so many times before, and we're so close. to we, we've, we've managed to guarantee ourselves either third or fourth place finish, which guarantees us a place in the UEFA Conference League. So that new third European trophy that they've got, 
the only way to get into the Europa League now is to win the Scottish Cup. Yeah. So that's got to be that's got to be the aim. There's no old for a minute. There's no Hearts. There's no Aberdeen. There is Dundee United. But the last time we played them in a semi final, we went on to win the cup. So you've got to be you've got to be pretty optimistic as far as omens go. That's that's a pretty good one. We shall see how it's as a Paisley boy. I'm saying nothing, but you're not going to win it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Hibs have a great record at Hamden, Reedy, so you'll be all right. (laughs) Um, So, easier, slightly easier one for you. So, favourite player of all time. Doesn't have to be your best player, just that one player who, if you were going to be a kid in the playground now, you would be him. Either of you first, whichever. I'll go first because I don't mind. So, Lewis Stevenson for me. So, I remember when I started going to the football, he was just a couple of years older than me, got his, got his start, and he's he's been in the team ever since. 507 appearances for Hibs. I think he's now the fourth all-time uh, record Hibs appearance holder, and he's the only the only Hibs player to have won both the Scottish Cup and the League Cup. So, enough said, he's a modern legend. Um, it just doesn't... Nobody comes close to him in terms of what he's actually achieved at the club. There's been so many better players. There's not been anybody that's been a better servant for Hibs. Credit to him for that. Yeah, mine's is fairly easy as well. Uh, Rudy Scatchel, um, I don't know if you know him, or you might remember him, but he's won two Scottish Cups for Hearts. He's the best left foot I've ever seen. He would love the goal against Tibbs as well, which was always good. And uh, yeah, like he could shoot from anywhere and the ball would go in, to be honest. He had a, a, he's had two different spells at Hearts and he, every single one of them he's scored more goal, like loads of goals. And even like in his uh, first spell, he... When he first started, I think he equaled the record of Larson where he scored in the first nine games in a row of the season. Was it maybe more than nine? But um, yeah, brilliant player, absolute legend as well. Got exactly what it meant to play for the club. And the, uh, but, he's the he was the pioneer of that little shitty bit of strapping around the wrist, absolutely. which I you did call out. I did call out <laughs> on this podcast weeks ago. Players that wear strapping on wrists. Um, and there's a question about him coming up. You'll like that. You'll like it. Oh, nice. <laughs> So it's either or. So you can only have one of the answers. Of course, they're not going to be easy and they're not going to be fair and they're going to be horrible. So we're starting with um, Callum. You're going first on this one. So you lose all four games to Hearts next season. You finish below them in the league, but you win the Scottish Cup. Or you beat them four times. You finish above them in the league, but they win the Scottish Cup. That is a horrible question. <laughs> I think, I think that, right. So, so to me, the Scottish Cup in Scottish football, unlike some cups, some domestic cups and some leagues, just means so much to, to any team to win it. I, I think I would take lose four times to Hearts, finish below them in the league, but win the Scottish Cup. And Tam, the same question, same answer as well. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been lucky. I've managed to see three Scottish Cup wins in my lifetime. Don't know if about Callum. How many you seen? But yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, just the one. Just had to get that in. But um, <laughs> nah, it's, uh, obviously as teams like Hibs and Hearts, we are we're never we're, we're not going to see our teams win the league. So um, the cups the cups are where the glory's at. So that's it for me. It, it was quite amusing. I asked the dictator boys the same question about losing four games to Rangers. Um, but you win the league. And they both went, oh, win the league. And they went, oh, no, hang on, hang on. <laughs> no, I'm not having that. <laughs> and they did toy. And one of them actually went with not winning the league, but beating them four times. <laughs> I think um, when you think of bragging rights, that whole year would be fine for the end of the season. Like, that would definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about Rudy Scatchell, and here's the either or. So, Callum, Rudy Scatchell gets the job as Hibs manager. And he wins the Scottish Cup. Do you sing his name? <laughs> I can't see that. I just can't see that. Um, but at the same time, if he won the Scottish Cup, perhaps I, I, I just can't. No, no. Win. I just couldn't see it. No, I just couldn't see it. I think you'd get a big round of applause, but that's it. That's it. That's your lot. So on the flip side, I didn't know to pick as my hearts, man. I was going to go Lee Griffiths because I know he winds you up quite a bit. So I'm going to yeah. go with Lee Griffiths winning it as the hearts manager. Do you chant his name? 
Um, <laughs> really difficult, isn't it? I'm sure you'd have to chant it, but like add in something else at the end. Of something <laughs> <like that. laughs> um, well, Tom, he's just won you the cup. Come on, give the boy a break. I, 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 See, I was laughing at you trying to answer your question, but no, you're right. A heavy round of applause and that would be it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> never, never, ever let that hatred go, no matter what. <laughs> right, so gents, last but not least, your five-a-side team. So having spoken to Tam briefly before you come on, Callum, I, I know that you've decided to pick a team each and then thrash it out between you to pick your team. So... Um, I don't know how long, how many days it took you to come to an agreement, but let's uh, let's start with your goalkeeper. Who wants to kick off with your keeper? I'll kick off since it is a Hearts goalkeeper, but um, it's Craig Gordon for for us. I, I felt that was the easiest position to pick because Craig Gordon is um, Hearts legend. Obviously, there's been two spells at the club. He's had multiple Scotland caps as well, and uh, one of the higher ones as of the last sort of decade as well. So. Hibs, Hibs, Hibs have quite um, don't have the best record in Callum's lifetime of goalkeepers, so um, that was probably quite an easy decision. Well, I don't know, but it's changed recently. So I mean, I think recently, yeah, Ophir yeah. Marciano had a had a really good shout there. He's he's the best keeper I've seen for Hibs. He's been our best keeper in my lifetime by a long shot. The only one that comes close is Daniel Anderson, um, but no, Ophir's better than him. So, but then I think it came down to international um, for that. I think it's just. It's hard. Ophir Marciano is doing great for the Israel national team just now. He's going to go on to bigger and better things than Hibs, I think. I think you know, teams in the Premier League are missing out a chance on him. You know, maybe teams are just getting promoted, that sort of thing. He's, he's a ready-made Premier League goalkeeper. He may or may not get that move. And he may or may not go into bigger and better things. But it's we hard decided to decided against, against him, though, so you don't, need, you don't need to talk about him. It's fine. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> So, um, first game of the Euros, would you start Craig Gordon? I actually would, personally. I think David Marshall's not been playing in a pretty poor derby team. So, um, I think it's between the two of them, David Marshall and Craig Gordon. I'd play Craig Gordon, personally. David Marshall, as much as he was... Marshall stripped to lose, though. Yeah, he, he was so successful in the, the penalty shootout to get us there. But, um, but I, I'm a bit biased. I'd choose Gordon, personally. For sure. <laughs> Of course, that's what we want, a Scottish Championship goalkeeper. That's, that's what we want to start in the Euros. <laughs> uh, I think he'll start with Marshall, but personally, if we can't talk McGregor out of retirement, I'd start yeah. with Gordon, personally. I, I, I like Craig Gordon. I was, was disappointed that Craig Gordon didn't do better down here, to be honest. And I know he only had a spell at Sunderland, but genuinely, I thought he was a Premier League goalkeeper all day 100%. long. Um, so, okay, he Craig was. Gordon. So, your first, your, uh, sorry, your first, your one and only defender. This was easy. This was there was really only ever one choice for a five-a-side football team. You're only allowed one defender, Frank Sozi. <laughs> Funny no enough, I thought, it, I thought it might be Frank. <laughs> yeah, it can only be him. Champions League winner with Marseille, um, and absolutely strolled with Hibs and strolled all the derbies. Absolutely bossed Hearts when he was in the Hibs team, just because he found it no bother whatsoever. He knew he was better. He was just a class above everybody else. Every now and then you get a player that comes into a team and into a league that is just absolute levels above, and that was Frank Sozzi. Yeah, and in such a, you know, even in the frantic games of the likes of your derby match or when you played the old firm, he just was so composed, wasn't he, all the time. He really was. And there'll be people out there who won't know who he is. And honestly, go and YouTube Frank Sozzi in some of his games. He genuinely, genuinely was silky silky smooth and in this modern day football of playing out from the back he would be absolutely perfect wouldn't he it, to be fair he would he would laugh it off yeah. yeah look at Tam he's trying not to agree but... <laughs> see I'm, I'm he's I, trying I, not I, to the, so, the so do you, do you want to tell Tam tell them who you would have picked I would tell them Steve, who you would have picked Stephen Presley but the, um, yeah, I, I found it difficult to disagree with Sozy, but I just find it hard to believe that Calm seen him in the flesh. But that, that's a different story. <laughs> I did, I did, I did. So the did first just as I was starting to go to the football. Ninety nine to oh one. I, I suppose you were about ten year old, eight, nine year old. So yeah, fair enough. So the, the, the first of your uh, midfielders then, gents. Um, I'll start. We've already discussed them, but Rudy Scatchel yeah. has to be. Um, we, we've went for one one in both teams, uh, but yeah, Rudy Scatchel 
easy. He would get the ball from anywhere on the pitch and probably put it in the top bag. So, uh, yeah, on a five-a-side pitch, certainly. Yeah, no, no problem. And uh, and the, the other one to play alongside him, as we discussed, Rudy at, uh, at length already as Nanuma Hibs manager winning the cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, especially in a five-a-side football pitch, um, the man with the biggest arse in football, John McGinn. <laughs> So he's, again, so in terms of players that I've, I've gone to see, John McGinn's the best player I've seen at Hibs, I reckon. Um, and, 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 you know, over and above Frank Sozi. So that was, I was a kid when I was first coming through with Sozi. You knew he was levels above, but you only really appreciate when you look back at it. John McGinn just saw him grow from strength to strength. And now look at him, he's absolutely um, essential to that Villa team. And he's been incredible for the national team as well. Yeah. It's just... And it just is his left foot as well. He can ping a ball anywhere on the park. Um, and it land exactly on a on a pinhead where it was supposed to go. Yeah. I mean, I saw him, and you won't like this, Tam, but I came up to Hamden for the League Cup final when St. Miriam beat Hearts 3-2. Oh, yeah. And John McGinn <laughs> was a, a scrawny 17-year-old that started the game. He was picked out of the blue. He wasn't really expected to start, and he started... And the boy, I mean, he was just a pre- I mean, he was just a kid. He was raw and he had full of energy. But the difference in him now, he's just, I mean, now he's just a proper unit and he is growing into a top, top player. And if one of, I would be amazed if one of the uh, big six, as we like to call them down here now, don't uh, don't go for him sometime soon. Because I think he's, he really is, he's, he's the next level up. I think he's Champions League level without a doubt. I actually can't, can't even yeah. disagree with it. He's, it's quite good that he's like, I can actually like him now as well. That he's <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to admit it when he's Rudy, playing with well. <laughs> Rudy, we'll, we'll never forget there was a derby where Harry Cochran for Hearts made one tackle on John McGinn and all the Hearts fans said that is it. Harry Co- John McGinn's in Harry Cochran's uh, po- back pocket. Who does Harry Cochran play for now? Montrose. Yeah, I think, I think John McGinn's struggling with that one. <laughs> So that means you've obviously had a bit of an argument about a striker then. Yep. We have Cause, done. Because we're two each. Think... There's, there we're, were two, two each and there's yeah. one place left. <laughs> and I came out I came out a bit less than this one, unfortunately. Because we we put it to our, our, our band group chat as well. So I got overruled with the uh, the two Hibs fans and just me. So um, <laughs> <laughs> go for it, Calm. Go on. So- I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be expected, but the the rationale here is five aside football. So we've gone for Gary O'Connor. Um, right, okay. Gary O'Connor, just an absolute unit of a boy, um, yeah. and had had an absolutely fantastic career as well. Could have could have been a little bit better. Could have had that bit of luck and, and sort of been at the top for a little bit longer. But then he was coming out as a breakthrough youngster and then moving into in Moscow and then Birmingham he was just a top top striker um, such a big lad and he was just absolutely class for Hibs as well yeah I mean I think if I mean I watched the documentary on him that was on BBC Scotland and and I think that kind of he was very honest on that and he was very open and I, you know kudos to him for doing it um, because I think he was quite honest about why he didn't play at the, the top top level because he just completely lost his way he had far too much money far too soon and and just, you know, stuck out in Russia with nobody. And he, he, it was just a shame because, yeah, he had everything. He? I mean, he was a big lad. He was quick. He could finish. He was powerful. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he was uh, he was a top player. I mean, Ian Ryard and up front together were a, were a formidable pairing, weren't they? Yeah. So Ryardin, to, to be honest with you, out of the two, Ryardin is, is my, it's got a, a bit more of a special place in my heart. I just loved Ryardin. Just, there's just something about it. The most, he's the most naturally gifted player I've seen at Just could do it, just born with class on a football pitch in terms of his abilities. But for a five-a-side team, you want O'Connor. But yeah, that, that documentary you talked about, that was that was a really, really good bit of, a, of documentary there. Um, looking at him and giving him an opportunity I think it's really interesting seeing players talk like that um, mm. after the fact. And the fact that they managed to come out of, like, you know, he was basically, what people have always sort of said, to just a, a, bit, a bit stupid with yeah. what he did, but also had his demons, had his gremlins and struggled as well. Um, and looking at him now, saying that he's trying to make sure that his son, who's coming through the academy system at Hibs, doesn't make the same mistakes, is yeah. great. And I think there's no life, there's no lesson like a life lesson. And somebody that's been through it that can tell you, what not to do. So it's really good to see that. Tam, I don't know if you want to say something about 
the fact that you're gutted that you didn't get whoever it was. <laughs> no, I, 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 if you're talking about the, the documentary, the only bit I would like to say, it was quite nice to see how completely emotional about the 5-1 Cup final he was, so that was really good. <laughs> 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 oh dear me was there any heart striker that nearly got in Tam any that you fought hard for well, well I was going to say De Vries but you said you hated him at Leeds so we'll that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the only other one was uh, only a short spell but Ricardo Fuller had a season at Hearts and yeah. he was amazing and such a good player in the Premier League in England as well so um, and we do have a Champions League winner that won it with uh, Porto we had uh, Edgar Shankowskis one of the Liverpool Unions yeah. who won the Champions League with Porto um, Two seasons at Hearts. He was kind of at the tail end of his career at that point, to be fair, but you could tell he was kind of a class above as well. Yeah. And just lastly, it's a special one for you, Callum. Are you pleased they're back in the Premier League? I look forward to the derby. I mean, I wouldn't have complained if they'd have if they'd have been beaten at the last game by Wraith um, and then didn't make it up to the playoffs. I wouldn't have complained at that. They could they could do with another season in the championship. Take their medicine. But um, <laughs> no, I think to be honest with you, Scottish football's better when all the top when all the the top teams are in in the top of the league. And and you can't. It's, I know you just have this argument with the likes of Leeds as, Leeds as well. You can't have a stadium and a fan base like that in the second division, third division of the of the football system. They need to be in the top division because they've got so much to bring um, to the league as a whole. And it's all real funny are watching them fall down again when they come back up. <laughs> we, we've also got a new derby to play with uh, St Mirren after last year's fiasco. Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, there, was, great. there was a little bit of social media banter that went on. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. The John, the John O'Beaker derby. On, like, the the I, John O'Beaker derby, that's the one. <laughs> Uh, seems like a lifetime ago now. Right. <laughs> Gents, that's been absolutely bright. I've loved it. Honestly, it's been so much fun. Um, guys, if you're watching this, please go and download the single. It's called Come Undone. Um, it's a top tune. You know, you've seen what good lads they are as well. And just for the fact they've given us so much entertainment for the last 20 minutes or so, <laughs> please go and download the single. Guys, genuinely, I wish you all the luck in the world. I hope everything falls in place for you and you, you get everything you want out of it. And, uh, when we finished on here, there will be a clip of the video to come undone. So stick around to watch that. But for now, Volker, thank you very much. And it's back to the show. So there you go, absolutely great lads. And literally, about two hours after, they sent me a tweet saying they were going to have nightmares about their future manager scenario. It was uh, it was just genius watching them. So that they would give them at best a polite round of applause. It was just superb. Um, next week I'm working. I've got I'm going to have another musical act for you. I've got four or five in the pipeline. It's just a case of tying up dates with the, the different ones. So there will be another musical act next week coming on the show. Um, the Snuts. If you're watching, or if any of you guys are watching that know the snuts, I want the snuts on air. I want the snuts on this show. So if you're watching, you're on Twitter, tweet the snuts and tell them you want them on Beat the First Man. Because those boys, we want them on air. All right? So, Dictator, I know you're big fans of the show. I also know you might know some of the snuts. So come on, get the snuts on for me. Anyway, lineal, lineal European Cups. Can't get me walking nerds out. Um, last weekend, there was a massive shock in the Lineal European Cup. Huge shock. Mainz beat Bayern Munich 2-1. So little Mainz are the European Cup holders all of a sudden. Remember that shitty European Super League that little shouty man spoke about last week? Yeah, I think this is the future. Mainz, European Cup winners. Um, they host Hertha Berlin on Monday in their first defence of the trophy. That's if they've not been on the old lagers since last week, since beating Munich. My money's on Hertha Berlin. I think Mainz will still be pissed, let's be honest. Um, in the lineal UEFA Cup, it's taken me a week to try and get a gag out of the Freiburg v Hoffenheim game. I'm not going to lie, it's been a struggle. This was the best I could come up with, so I apologise in advance. So, Susanna Hoffenheim from the Bengals, she managed to retain the trophy as they avoided being fried like a burger. And no Manic Monday for them.
What? What's wrong with that? Susanna Hoffenheim, Susanna Hoffs, Bangles, Manic Monday, Fried Like a Burger, Freiburg. Genius. Anyway, Hoffenheim don't have a game this weekend, which is probably for the best, because how many times can I do the Susanna Hoffenheim gag? Um, they are in action in a week's time. We'll, we'll, have filmed, we'll be filmed next week's show by then, so I can save the gags till then. So uh, that's how we stand in the lineal European Cups. So it's time for the It's a Knockout, the draw. So remember, the Premier League managers put them all in a thing. There was loads and loads and loads going on. There's five categories, all the manager. We vote on Twitter, we vote on Facebook, blah, 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 and then we do the draw. So we're down to the last 16. So simple enough, we'll draw the ties today, we'll draw the category, and then next week we'll announce the first four ties, and you'll be able to vote on them the week after. So there's no voting this week, this is just the draw for the last 16. So I'll have to write it down as we go along. So here we go. So I don't know if you can see that. Mikel Arteta. So Arteta. V. Very expensive uh, pieces of paper in a bowl being used instead of um, velvet bag and balls. Scott Parker. So Arteta v Parker. Any gags in there about Parker? Thunderbirds maybe? Yeah. David Moyes. This is gripping stuff. I mean, this should be on pay-per-view, never mind free to air. V. Sean Dyche. A battle of the gingers. Moyes v. Dyche. Oh, that's an old school one, that. I wish we were doing the uh, boxing for this one. Dean Smith, who came through the first round. Remember he knocked out... Uh, oh, I can't remember he knocked out. Knocked someone out, didn't he? Graham Potter? Yeah, I think it was Graham Potter. Oh, Dean Smith v Marcelo Bielsa. The old Aston Villa Leeds rivalry comes back to the surface again. Will Bielsa have to kick the ball out or something in this one? Yeah, don't know. Anyway, Pep Guardiola. I'm just going to write Guard. And Guardiola is up against, it's a Manchester derby. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Big match. So we had a Merseyside derby in the first round. We've got a Manchester derby in the last 16. And so, next one. Oh, Nuno Espirito Santo. Nuno, or NES, as he's now been written down on my piece of paper. And he is up against Jurgen Klopp. Oh, I nearly went the whole segment without saying he's a winger. Uh... Big Ralph, Ralph Harson Hootel. Could do a gag about Hasselhoff, couldn't I? But I won't. That'd be easy. Against Roy Hodgson. I think Roy Hodgson will be open for a category which doesn't involve too much in the way of physical activity. Ryan Mason, a late call up into the competition after Mourinho was sacked. Tottenham were nearly expelled from the competition. And he will be up against Steve Bruce. So there's two managers left who will have home advantage. Big Sam Allardyce. Will it be a pint of wine drinking competition? He'd win that. And he is up against Brendan Rodgers. So that completes the draw. Ties will be played on. Shite to that. Um, so, Arteta v Parker, Moyes v Dyche, Smith v Bielsa, Guardiola v Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Nuno Espirito Santo v Jurgen Klopp, Ralph Hartenhutel v Roy Hodgson, Ryan Mason v Steve Bruce, Allardyce against Rodgers. What's the category I hear you say? What's the category reading? It wasn't me, it was someone else. Just tell us the category reading. Right, here's the category. And it's number five. Put up a shelf. So, the category is put up a shelf. So, quite simply, out of those ties, who will be the best at putting up a shelf? So, we'll review the first four ties next weekend. Uh, then we'll review the four ties the weekend after. Um, and then we'll have the draw for the quarterfinals on our way to crowning the Premier League manager. It's a knockout champion.
Come on, if you've not joined in yet, seriously, just chill out. You've been locked down for a year and a half, enjoy this shit. Anyway, how old the reveal? Here he is, our old mate, Ted. How have you got on on Binder, Ted? Any bear action? No, bloody thing is trawling with pandas and grizzlies. I mean, who wants one of them? Crush things would eat me alive. Oh, Ted, Ted, enough, 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 enough. Stop. Right, good news though, Ted. The public has returned with some guesses. So, we're going to go to the public first. So, Cliff from Cardiff, he is definitely not 28. And no, everybody is not 28. That was my guess. Well, you were wrong as well. D from Dundee. No, no, he's not a crap singer. That's another. That's that thing on BBC One on a Saturday night. You haven't got to guess who the crap singer is. God, this is getting hard work. Ted, give me another guess. 26. No. 27. How many times? Are you just going to keep going through the numbers until you get there? No more. Just get on with it. There might be a cutie joining the app. Um, well, when this picture of Carlo Trevisanelli was taken... He was 24, 24 years, that is 25 years younger than me now. To be fair, Reedy, he looks younger than you. He bloody ought to, he was half my age, half my age, not a couple of years younger. Anyway, Ted, for another week, my friend, your time is up. Stay safe, buddy, enjoy Binder, and we'll see you next week. Oh, he's gone, off trawling Binder for a bit more bear action. God, the thought, the mind boggles. Just leaves us guess V knowledge. It still remains at guess 16, knowledge 14. So I won't lie though, my backside was twitching last weekend. So guess had picked Liverpool to beat Newcastle 1-0. As it went into the 94th minute at 1-0, I'm thinking, shit, I'm going to be five points behind again here. Thankfully for me, Newcastle scrambled an equaliser out of nowhere and uh, kept it at 16-14. So, you know, I was saved by that, if nothing else. So, the boys from Volker, they chose this week's game. Uh, they went for the big clash on Sunday between Manchester United and Liverpool. They did, Callum very cheekily suggested, maybe we should go for St. Johnston v Hibs. But I did explain, I have enough issues explaining to guests who Southampton are and the likes of those so it probably wasn't a good idea to go down the route of St. Johnston v. Hibs. Anyway, I gave her the game. Mm, Liverpool are better than Man United, aren't they? So I'm going to go with one all. Eh? OK, so the logic needs a little bit of work. Because if one is better than the other, surely you pick the one to beat the other. No, she went, this one's better than this one. They're going to draw. So the logic needs some work, but I won't lie... That was the score I had written down. So I've had to change it because I'm, I'm never going to go the same ever. That was one of the rules I set myself at the start that I wouldn't go for the same score as she goes for. May not be full of confidence after um, Thursday night's win over Rome. I mean, 6-2 and they were looking right up against it as well. So the scoring goals, um, they, they need to keep winning. They just want to keep the pressure on City until it's fully dead. Liverpool, they're just, they're just not firing at all. Oh, it's not an easy call, and I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to go for a Man United win. Uh, I'm going to go for Man United 2-1. Uh, I think it'll be close, as they always are. I was going to go 0-0, so if it's 0-0, I'll be fecking raging. Um, but I'm going to go 2-1 Man United. I, I just I can't see... To be honest, Liverpool don't know that I've got a clean sheet in them at the moment. Um... And Man United have found, other than last week against Leeds, they do seem to have found their scoring boots a bit. So I'm, I'm sticking with it. 2-1 Man United. So Liverpool fans, you should all be delighted now because I've just predicted Man United to win. So there we've got it for another week. Again, the usual nonsense, the usual silliness, a little bit of football thrown in as well. Even some new music for you to go and listen to. Go and download the guys from Volker, honestly. They, they were top guys and it's a good tune as well. If you like your Foo Fighters, you're going to love Volker. Um, if you enjoyed the show, as always, please drop me a little like because I love those, as always. I didn't do it last week because I was in too much of a pissy mood and my little shouty man. It massages me head and me belly ego. No, it massages me ego and me belly head. I got that completely wrong. What an utter idiot I am. But anyway, so if you also, if you haven't subscribed, 
click down below, blah, 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 blah. Ding, ding. Next stop, Saturday the 8th of May for it will be episode 38 of me and my silly little show. As always, guys, please enjoy yourself, but stay safe and we will see you all next week.